Welcome to All Change, the program that puts design at the heart of the learning experience. Today we're at Darleston Community Science College, where we're going to be transforming an unloved storage area into a fantastic ICT room. Embedding ICT in the curriculum is a priority for every school. Here at Darleston Community Science College, they've already begun to upgrade their ICT facilities, but they still need space where gifted and talented pupils can carry out individualised learning. We'll be working with the school community over the course of a weekend to transform a storage area into a fantastic ICT room. Darleston Community Science College was built in 1962 and was once the local grammar school. Since 2003, it's been a specialist science college with 1,100 pupils. Until now, this room has been largely used for storage, but the school wants it to be used as a facility for advanced IT work and for individualised learning. And also in today's All Change, we visit Hampton Gurney School in London, where selling the playground helped finance a brand new multi-storey school with outdoor play decks. We look at plans for a new primary school providing community facilities to be used both during the school day and after hours. And ideas for role play. We showcase some products that might be suitable for your school. The storeroom at Darleston is equipped with a large heavy bench for networked PCs. We decided to leave this in situ but we're going to create additional space for organised storage and some new computer workstations in the area currently buried away by clutter. Shalanda de Cruz Architects in Birmingham were set the challenge of improving the ICT room. Our project manager, John Craig, discussed ideas for providing new storage with one of the practice's designers, Diane Pinterich. We'll have in every single one a uh, polycarbonate box and then the kids could paint on the box a, a image okay. or, or part of the image. So in other words they're all contributing to make one big picture. Yeah. Marco de Cruz and his partner Maria Shalanda fleshed out the concepts behind their design for Darleston. We've got uh, an ordering element which is like a, a circuit running through a circuit board connecting all these disparate elements because obviously we've got to provide storage uh, we've already got this workstation here, which we're trying to make sense of. It's a big element in that space. So this is a window and this is a blind, then? Uh, that is a window, but these aren't blinds. So that's actually a polycarbonate sheet, like the one over there. Marco's linking element will be a pink painted stripe, connecting the green computer benching with new storage to go on this wall. At the heart of the design this week is um, technology. It's a, it's a computer space. We've got this workstation at the centre of the space, which we can't change. So we needed a very strong ordering element. And taking the theme of technology, we're producing sort of a, a circuit board aesthetic, which is running round. We're providing storage again, which is obviously important in any space you've got in a school. And, uh, and workspace, work desking. So this element runs round the space. It's very strong. Uh, is going to be in a pink, which is contrasting with the green, which may sound hideous, but they're complementary colours, and it's just going to make that green a little bit sharper. Uh, and it's running along our workstation, up the wall, across the window, and also behind a, a screen that we're providing, which is sort of diffusing the daylight as it comes through. So hopefully we won't need a blind in the space. So you've got this layering of elements. Clutter accumulated over a period of years had overwhelmed the space, making learning very difficult. Staff, parents and our project manager, John Craig, all weighed in to get rid of it all so that the redecoration could start. Boxes of equipment and even new learning resources were buried under piles of paperwork and, quite frankly, rubbish. John, we're in an ICT room this week. What are you going to be doing here? It's going to be an ICT room. It was a junk room before. It was an utter, utter mess. Now, we're actually stuck with these green tabletops. So to brighten the walls, we'll get rid of all the green, we're going to paint them all white. And then we're going to sort of 
pull every unit together, if you like, with a, a very sort of deep pink stripe. And the idea is more like a, a sort of Miami um, 1920s sort of Art Deco sort of feel. That's the idea that Marco is trying to get across. Adding some extra storage as well, and that's sort of going over there. And to bring the students into it, they're going to create um, computer graphics and artwork, which are going to go onto notice boards and actually into some storage boxes we've provided. So you're going to actually transform this from what was a storage space and a very dark, nasty place to work into something which is really usable for the students? Exactly, because it must have been nigh on impossible to try and study and work on a computer in a junk room, which is really what it was. Downstairs in the woodwork room, John Craig and site manager Tony Norton got started on the carpentry. Tony, the idea here, we're going to make little egg boxes, one box into the other. It'll go through the doorways, I'm not too sure. Almost six feet high, do you think that will go up the stairs? I don't think it will. Way too high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no way. What sort of school is this, Barry? <laughs> oh, an inch out. Students began designing artwork for the room. What sort of design are you doing? Well, the room's only white right now, and they said I need more colour, so I'm making it as colourful as I possibly can. You really are? How many colours are you using there? More or less all of them. <laughs> And tell me about the design that you're putting together. Me, I'm after uh, something that will stand out. I'll put a black background and bright colours, see if I can brighten up the room. I'm just using pictures that I've searched for and I'm putting different ones together to make more futuristic style. Graham, you're the deputy head here at the school. Tell me what difference you think this room's going to make to the way teaching and learning is delivered here. Well, we're always struggling for ICT facilities. Um, Cross-curricular work is something that we're trying to increase and uh, of course the consequence of that is we, we need more access to the ICT facilities and this will help us to address that problem. And how are you off for space in the school? Do you have a lot of rooms that you could use in this way? Um, no, especially uh, rooms like this which um, we, we want to open up for um, drop-in facilities for use at lunch times, for use uh, after school. Um, these type of rooms um, we haven't got. Uh, most of the ICT facilities that we have at the moment are booked solidly for lessons. Building new schools on restricted urban sites is a major design challenge. The obvious solution is to build upwards. At Hampton Gurney School in London they've done just that. Children arrive on the ground floor at nursery, move up through the building as they progress and leave when they reach the top. Hampton Gurney was originally set below street level, built on a bomb site. The new £6 million building was opened in 2002, after the school took the controversial step of selling the playground to a developer for flats. The six floors of the school each have a covered play deck, open to the fresh air, that children use at break times. There's a small, sunken, outdoor play space at the rear. Light flows through the school down to the communal hall via central atrium. Free from visible support columns, it's sheathed in plate glass. When we first met the governors, it was very much the idea of the teaching tower, bring the children out of the ground and um, animate them in their own community. It was really important for us not to waste space on, on corridors and space which tends to become pretty dead in a normal school. And all the classrooms spill out straight onto their outdoor play which means that they can you know, use them for teaching spaces, use them for outdoor resource, or just use them for play, as you, as you can see. The roof is used as a technology garden for outdoor learning and incorporates a classroom pod. Um, today, we're going to have a closer look at soils. What are the things that we need to find in the soil in these pot plants? Nutrients, are the things that are going to feed the soil. It's ideal, really. It's in a classroom environment, but it's not in the classroom. So, and the children stay interested because it's something that's a little bit different. As well as outdoor science, there's a big emphasis on ICT at Hampton Gurney, which is a large computing facility with spectacular views. The head teacher at Hampton Gurney is very proud of the ICT provision. Children get an hour of ICT training 
every single week. And we are hoping that by the time they reach 11 years of age, they will be fully equipped with using the technology and be ready for you know, the lifelong learning in the next stage of education. The design of the learning environment is very popular with the staff. It's incredible. The technology is a real asset. I don't know how I'd go back to teaching without a smart board. It would be a major factor in what job I would accept, definitely. There is a downside to all this glass. Urban grime builds up and makes the windows dirty. At £150 an hour for a window cleaner and a harness, that's a bill of up to £8,000 per year. We have had great difficulties getting all these different areas uh, cleaned properly. And eventually, you know, if it's not done, the glass windows could look dreary and you know, unpleasant. We have to weigh out what we put in, into our budget. Do we weigh out cleaning the windows or do we weigh out having another member of staff? On the other hand, it does look very, very lovely and it is a very unique building which you know, um, the children are very proud of, the children, parents and the governors. Back at Darleston, John and Tony have finished the storage unit, but oh dear, it won't go up the stairs. Now I have to take it all apart and take it all the way up the stairs and lock the corridors into the room and put it all back together again. What do you think the students will think when they turn up on Monday and start to use it? Shocked. You can imagine they haven't really been able to use it effectively because there's just been too much rubbish in there. So. This is so bright and cheerful, I think that'll help. Well, I think it's to do with ownership, isn't it? And if they can see that it's nice and clean and tidy and bright, then they'll keep it that way and take pride in the room and therefore hopefully take pride in their work. Jo, Emma, tell me about what the ICT room that we're working on was like before. Everybody used to just dump everything in there. It didn't really matter if it was anything or materiality, just everything went in the room. It was all very dull colours as well. I think it'll be a better teaching space for the students and It'll provide more space for the teachers teaching. Zach, what do you think the new room's going to be like when it's finished? It's going to be much better. There's going to be more colour, um, better design. It's just going to be more useful altogether. With buildings more than 40 years old, Darleston College faces many challenges in how best to use its learning spaces. Assistant head Ian Moore took us to one area where they have started to make some improvements. Ian, this is a recently refurbished science lab here yes. at the school. Tell me about it. It's been refurbished for about three years now. We actually got some of the funding for this from becoming a science college. Um, it was, in fact, probably one of the worst rooms in the school prior to being refurbished. What was it uh, like before? It was smaller than this for a start, towards the back of the room. Um, there was actually a prep lab that ran across across the back of the classroom and that took up some of the space and then the benching was appalling in here really old-fashioned been here since virtually the, the, the school was built and has it made a big difference to teaching and learning in this space it's made a massive difference in terms of what we can do with regards to teaching and learning in here and um, the students absolutely love coming in here now they're really excited about coming into science lessons in this room um, and sort of the, the sort of lessons that we can now teach the kids are much different to what we've got the ability to teach before now, I know circulation's a real problem for you here, Ian. Yes, it is, and this is a very good example, actually. I mean, you can see it's very enclosed. There's not much width to the corridor. And there's also the fact that we've got the slope on it as well, which makes it quite dangerous at times for students to be moving along. The help given to John Craig by Tony Norton was priceless, as the storage units needed lots of cutting, drilling and sawing. And the students' artwork was well underway. John, it's looking very different in here already. What have you been doing? Well, so far, in fact, we've done better than I actually thought. All the walls now are all totally white. You can see there's little pink strips here. These are the lines that are going to pull all the design together. But this, come and have a look at this. Now, they wanted some storage, and here it is. <laughs> so, I hope you're feeling strong, Sharon, because we need to get it up onto that wall over there. John, I think this is where you're going to have to excuse me. These days, schools are not just places where children come to learn. They can provide facilities which glue their communities together. 
As part of the government's Building Skills for the Future programme, architects were asked to think about what learning environments could be like. Walters & Co and Architects have developed a plan for a primary school which provides a heart for its community and can be used during the school day and after hours. Like all the design teams involved, Walters & Cohen were given a real yet anonymous site to work with. They decided to design their school from the inside out, starting with the classrooms. We worked very carefully in getting the school to be a proper community school so we could use certain aspects of, of this accommodation even during school hours. People come and use the hall and the change rooms. And the idea here is that these are all the things that the community would use. So we've got the hall in here, which is directly accessible by the community. We've got the nursery over there, which is directly accessible da daily by the community. The overriding thing is that every school is actually a public building. And it's the first public building that these little children are ever going to actually um, experience. So it's set back slightly from the road. There is a public forecourt. You can see things like, you know, markets and things happening in this space, all, all being used by children on skateboards on the weekends, that this is a public space. The identity of the school is very important and the, the big generous entrance that actually makes you feel as if you've arrived somewhere important, going into the school and seeing all the way through to the, the heart of the school, which is really what it's all about. And we have the classrooms on either side, which open into the heart. And if the classroom needs to get bigger or smaller, it actually just expands and contracts into that space. And this is where you get children doing all kinds of things. You get them sitting on the stage, you get them in a pod learning cooking. They've got small group rooms which are allowing one-to-one -one learning. But also in going up and looking down into these spaces, what we were able to do is create a whole lot of social spaces or smaller spaces which you otherwise wouldn't get if you just had a corridor. Not all the partitions that are dividing the space need to be full walls. Some of them can be shelves, some of them can be glazed and you can see through them. And the heart of the school then opens to the outside with this little amphitheatre. So by opening those doors up, you could extend the heart of the school right into the landscape. So it gives you that link from heart of the school, classroom, outdoor classroom, play. Back at Darleston, the pink line has been painted. It looks completely different when we walked in this morning to how it was yesterday. John and Tony are cutting the corrugated sheet to put in the window, and the students' artwork is being laminated. With lots of science kit around and long opening hours, the college needs to have a comprehensive CCTV security system to protect the premises. We don't want to turn the school into looking like a prison or, or what have you, but we do want to be aware of who's on site and where they are and what, what, what's happening. And with us being a community school, of course, we're open until 10 o'clock on an evening, which means that the, the school gates can't be locked as, as staff leave at the end of the day. So it must be quite a challenge to be open and accessible as a community school, but at the same time create a really safe environment for your pupils. Yes, it is, yes. And we rely upon the support of people like the caretaking staff and the community staff on an evening to help us out with that, as well as the technology of cameras and the rest of it. There's been community education in Walsall now for about 30 years, and effectively the schools are open 24-7, and they've effectively worn the schools out. It's a, it's a combined effort. So consequently, there's been no real thought to reinvestment in the authority about how you rebuild these schools. And so I would imagine if you went to most of the schools in the borough, you'd find a very similar picture to what you have here. How best to allocate scarce resources towards the maintenance of a crumbling building falls to the college's Board of Governors. It's had little bits tagged on, but um, it was st it's still a building that was originally designed for just over 600 pupils, and we've got 1,200 pupils. It just doesn't fit. This is a pretty typical 1960s building with a flat roof. It must present lots of challenges in terms of the condition of the building. Yes, definitely. Um, we've had leaks through, through the roof um, twice last summer. Um, that's taken a fair amount of our capital. Uh, we've just had to spend £125,000 on asbestos removal um, on a part of the building that was considered unfit for its purpose. So it does um, give us the odd challenge or two. 
Okay, now we've built the unit. The unit's going onto this wall here. And it's really heavy, so grab wherever you possibly can. Lift it up onto this, shove it over there, and then have to pop it up there, and then I'll screw the holes in. John and Tony's storage unit needed the strength of 10 to get it on the wall. You realise how strong they were. Special vinyl film was used to continue the pink theme along the window. So, Sarah and Nikki, what do you think of the colours that are used in here? Bright, different, green and pink, not so sure. <laughs> Time for the laminated artwork to be mounted in the storage boxes. Drama and role play can provide exciting learning opportunities right across the curriculum, and particularly in primary schools. But getting the right resources to maximise the value of role play is really critical. Here are some ideas to kickstart your pupils' imagination. Role play and the use of drama in the classroom encourage creativity and the development of social skills. These panels provide a good backdrop for primary play. Extra sections are available. Hard wearing and skills for children. Pop these up and fold them away for easy storage. Costumes add another dimension. Letting their imagination run free. Staging gives you more options when creating a theatre space. The British Educational Suppliers Association has a code of practice which their members comply with. You can find details of all these products on the Teachers TV website. John, there's a hype of activity in here. What's still to be done? Still to be done. We're just about to finish off this um, frosting on the glass. Tony's about to put the sheet in here. That's that plastic sheet behind you. That will go in there, fix that into place. Um, how long are you going to be on this painting with the boxes? Hours. Within hours. Hours. I reckon about 30 minutes on that. Student Nicola Rowley took creative control of the art display as the Darleston team started to get the room kitted out. The brief was to transform a cluttered space into a functional and stylish ICT facility for students of all abilities, including the gifted and talented. Using low-cost materials and with most of the work being done by members of the Darleston College community, the transformation of the old storeroom was effected over the course of a single weekend. John, I cannot believe how different it looks in here. How have you done it? Have we done it? Well, it's white and it's bright, and it's gone from a storeroom to a classroom. It's amazing, just a little bit of paint, a little bit of MDF, a little bit of plastic, and the transformation. Wasn't as bad as I thought. Wasn't as bad as I thought. It all went together rather well. I even got painting this week rather than just doing the old carpentry. Um, but I do like the students' artwork, and I especially like the way one of the students took over the design. I think we don't need an architect, we don't need a designer. Now that you've started, guys, I'm going to take over and she, we need something over here as well as over there, it needs to be balanced and she really got into it. It's that sort of attitude that uh, it makes you feel good because you think yeah, they're really taking this seriously, they're taking it on board and uh, they're going to feel a big part of it. It's their room, not mine, or not yours, it's theirs. Because it's got to be an iterative process, hasn't it? The users have got to get in there and see how they're going to live in this space as much as anything. Yeah, and the fact that they take it over and they really feel that it is theirs, I mean that is really, really important and uh, they've definitely proved that this week. The design used a simple paint effect to tie things together. MDF storage and student artwork replaced all the mess. A low-cost light diffuser.
final strip is another inexpensive feature of the design, along with the plastic storage boxes. Tony, I have to say a big thank you to you for all the help you've done. No problem That's at all. Brilliant. Now, in my day, it was known as the caretaker, but you're not the caretaker no, here, are you? Site manager. Site manager, indeed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bit different now. A bit different now, to oh, be yes. on. Yeah. But are you pleased with all the work you've done yeah, here? It's, yeah, it's been uh, great, actually, and it makes the room look bigger and without the clutter as well. It's fantastic. We've had a great time as well. It's Good. Fun. I'm pleased. Yeah. And, young man, I hear you've done some artwork for here, haven't you? Yeah, I've done some of the boxes and stuff I'm doing. Yeah, and you pleased with this? Yeah, it looks good. And Nicola, you're our new designer now, I believe. Yeah. Yes, because of course you took over from us. Yeah. You decided that uh, we didn't uh, actually do enough, and you decided you wanted some more yeah. pink strips over there and some more pictures over there. And on the window. And on the window as well. And are you pleased now with the final result? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should move in here. Ian, now the room's all finished. What do you think of it? I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think it's been superb to incorporate all the, all the kids' artwork into it and the students. You know, the, the effort they've put in has been tremendous. They've really enjoyed being involved in it all. I mean, the other, the other big thing, I think, feature is, is this here on the window. So that's going to help with the glare on the computer yes. screens then? Yeah, fantastic. brilliant. Fantastic. And, and then again, the storage boxes with the, the students' art um, gives them some ownership of the room as well. I'm assuming you're not going to bring everything back that was in this room before. Certainly not, <laughs> no, no chance. I don't even think that storage, storage. would manage to cope with it. <laughs> no. And Graham, now that it's finished, what impact is this room going to have on teaching and learning here? Well, it's going to make a big difference, in fact, because we've got a very stimulating area here that the students are going to love coming into. And uh, it gives us another resource, not only for lunch times and after school, but also, of course, for cross-curricular work. Um, it's, it's going to be a facility that students can come into during lesson time that's not going to be timetabled. It's not going to be blocked out uh, with, with classes always in here. So that's going to be a superb uh, facility for us. And uh, I'd really like to thank the, uh, the people who've, who've contributed to all this. Your team have worked tremendously hard on this. We've been very impressed with them. And, of course, uh, the staff and students who've given up their weekend to come and do this. That's been great. And we've been really impressed by the input that your pupils have had here, particularly in terms of the artwork that they've produced for this room. We've had a great time here. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. If you've been involved in a design project or would like help transforming an area of your school, All Change would love to hear from you. You can contact us through the Teachers TV website. We also find details of today's programme. From Donaston Community Science College, it's goodbye from All Change. <laughs>